As night falls on the peaceful street, we see Henry walking towards the trash bin. Suddenly, a loud cry breaks the silence, and Henry's heart races with concern as he recognizes the voice. It is Claire, his neighbor and former confidante from high school, crying with tears streaming down her face. In a gentle tone, Henry approaches her and asks how she is doing. Despite her evasive response, he senses her pain and can't help but feel frustrated at the thought of Zack, Claire's boyfriend, causing her distress. However, Claire attempts to steer the conversation towards happier topics, such as her upcoming graduation trip to Paris with her friend Lily. As they reminisce about their shared memories, they both realize that with Claire leaving for college and possibly staying in Europe, their time together may be limited. Henry is overcome with sadness, wishing he had more time to share his stories and secrets with Claire before she leaves. With a smile, Claire encourages Henry to tell her everything now, knowing that their paths may not cross again. As they say their goodbyes, Henry is left with a lingering sadness that he can't shake off. In the following scene, Henry darts towards his room, his heart pounding with a sense of urgency. His mind is consumed with the desire to confess his true feelings to Claire before she departs for her graduation trip. With trembling hands, he attempts to pen down his thoughts, but his words fail him. He writes something, only to crumple the paper and discard it. Undeterred, he makes another attempt, but the outcome remains the same. As moments pass, Henry reflects upon his emotions and decides to write from his heart. He admits that he has known Claire for the majority of his life, and despite their friendship, he hasn't been entirely truthful with her. With the end of high school looming, he believes that it is time for him to come clean and express his feelings. He reminisces about the day Claire moved next door, and he watched her from afar, cheering on the movers as she sat on the front porch. Henry recalls the memory vividly, down to the smallest detail, but curiously, he cannot pinpoint the exact moment he fell in love with her. It is almost as though his love for her existed long before they even met, and he was just waiting for her to enter his life. These emotions have persisted over the years, refusing to fade away. With a heavy heart, Henry concludes his letter, confessing that he doesn't think his feelings for Claire will ever diminish. The next morning, Henry wakes up with a resolute determination, with only one objective on his mind, to give Claire the letter he had penned down the night before. He steals himself for the task ahead and avoids everyone he comes across as he walks with purpose towards the stadium. As he approaches the bleachers, he spots Claire sitting with her friend Lily, watching the game. Henry walks up to Claire, the letter clutched tightly in his hand. Before he can say anything, Zack suddenly appears from behind and envelops Claire in his embrace. Henry is taken aback, his heart sinking as Claire tells him that it was just a petty argument. Devastated, Henry puts the letter in his book, his dreams of revealing his feelings to Claire shattered. Claire notices the sadness in Henry's eyes and asks him what he was going to say. Henry quickly brushes off the question, telling her that his mother has invited her, and her family over for dinner before they leave. Claire thanks him and assures him that they will attend the dinner. Lily, on the other hand, senses something unusual about Henry's behavior towards Claire, as if he harbored feelings for her that he couldn't express, but she remains silent on the matter. Henry walks away, dejected and sad, his heart heavy with unrequited love. As the following scene opens, ten years have elapsed since we last saw Henry, and he is now accompanied by his longtime friend and colleague, Tom. They prepare to depart for home, embarking on a journey that involves air travel and a taxi ride, until they finally arrive at their destination. Upon their arrival, Henry's mother, Susan, embraces her son warmly and exchanges pleasantries with Tom. Henry walks into his old room, which immediately triggers a wave of memories from his youth. He carefully inspects every corner of the room, rekindling old flames of nostalgia. Tom joins him and together they relive their shared experiences and reminisce about their friendship. Henry recalls the days when he and Claire used to send airplane notes to each other. Later, Henry and Tom make their way downstairs, where Susan is preparing dinner. They both pitch in and help her set the table, exchanging stories and updates on their respective lives. When Henry and Tom assist Susan in setting the table, Henry feels compelled to ask his mother about the current occupants of the Goodster's old house. Susan confirms that Claire, the girl he once knew so well, has taken up residence there temporarily. A mix of surprise and curiosity overtakes Henry, and he admits that he had believed Claire's parents to have moved out. Susan reveals that Claire's grandmother had owned the property, and that Claire had returned to care for her in her final days before her passing. Despite his mother's insistence that she had previously informed him of this, Henry cannot remember the conversation. Tom, ever the jester, interjects that his memory is akin to a steel trap and offers to impart some wisdom on the subject to Henry. The doorbell chimes, and Susan announces the arrival of Claire and Lily, beckoning a dinner of reminiscence and merriment. Though Henry appears somewhat tense, he greets Claire with open arms as she warmly embraces him, praising his growth since their last meeting. Lily is introduced to Tom, and they share a chuckle, reminiscing about their biology class. As they settle around the table, they exchange stories, with Claire speaking of her vocation as a professional photographer, and Lily expressing her passion for her floral business. The food is consumed, and the laughter is shared as they recount memories of their youth before being separated by life's unpredictability. 
Claire playfully accuses Henry of negligence, prompting him to return the blame, but the joviality returns when Claire shares that she attempted to track him down on social media. Henry basks in the momentary bliss of her revelation. They converse, dine, and revel in each other's company, finally agreeing to meet for a cup of coffee the next morning before parting ways. Next, as Henry proceeds to unpack his belongings, Tom leisurely peruses a book from the shelf, settling himself upon the bed. Amidst Henry's rummaging, Tom suddenly finds a photograph of Lily, and praises her beauty. Henry urges Tom to ask her out, but Tom doubts his chances, recalling the social chasm that existed between them in high school. However, he acknowledges that he has matured and has a decent job now. Yet, their tranquility is disturbed when Tom turns the pages of the book and stumbles upon a letter. Henry becomes agitated, making a futile attempt to retrieve it. However, Tom persists and starts reading the letter, which Henry had written for Claire during their high school years. As Tom reads through the emotional and heartfelt words, Henry is flooded with anxiety and uncertainty, unsure of how to react. The emotions in the room are palpable as Henry's long-suppressed feelings come to the surface. His confession of love for Claire, the unattainable high school dream girl, is a revelation that catches Tom off guard. In a moment of vulnerability, Henry confesses that he was too afraid to tell Claire how he felt in high school. He believed that she was too popular to ever consider going out with him. The weight of unspoken words and buried emotions seems to press heavily on the air as Henry retreats to his bed, his mind racing with memories. Tom lingers in the room for a moment longer before quietly departing, leaving Henry alone. In the soft morning light, Henry descends the stairs and approaches his mother, Susan, who sits in the living room. Taking a seat beside her, she unveils an album brimming with photographs and memories from days long gone. As he pursues the images of his youthful self, a wave of wistfulness washes over him. Susan notices her son's pensive demeanor and affectionately points out how dashing he appears, causing Henry to blush with modesty. While Susan flips through the pages, Henry becomes captivated by snapshots of her, and her closest friend, Edith. Sharing with him that they fell out of touch after a quarrel, she then reveals that Edith and his father had a brief romance before he and Susan fell in love. This revelation startles Henry, who grapples with the concept of his father being with someone else before his mother. Overcome with emotion, Susan's eyes glisten with tears as she reminisces about her departed spouse. Through her tears, she confides in Henry that the album is all she has left of him, and the memories it summons forth are at once comforting and agonizing. Henry's heart aches as he witnesses his mother's grief, and he enfolds her in a tight embrace. The memories conjured by the album stir up a gamut of emotions within him, and he too misses his father. In the next scene, Henry and Claire stroll through the village, the quaint charm of the place enveloping them. Henry marvels at how the village has remained unchanged, while Claire basks in the familiarity of it all. While walking, they sip their coffee and chat about the practicalities of Claire's house, which needs repairs before she can sell it. Henry offers to help, and despite Claire's hesitation, he insists, assuring her that he genuinely wants to lend a hand. Claire's delight is evident as she enthusiastically agrees to aid Henry in the preparation of his mother's birthday, and they shake hands, sealing the agreement. Their conversation is light and pleasant, punctuated by laughter. The next scene depicts Tom feeling a sense of eagerness as he heads towards Lily's flower shop. He can't help but think about her and how her eyes sparkled when she spoke about her love for flowers. As Tom enters the shop, he is greeted by the sweet scent of fresh blooms and the sight of Lily, her radiant smile filling the room with warmth. Her welcoming words put Tom at ease, and he finds himself captivated by her passion as they talk about her love for flowers. During their conversation, Tom is struck by the depth of Lily's insight, and the beauty of her writing. He is touched by the tender notes she writes, each one a reflection of her own heartfelt desires. He feels drawn to Lily, to the way in which she embodies a certain kind of magic. And although Lily is busy and unable to spend more time with him after he invited her for coffee, he knows that he has found something special in her. Later, Henry and Claire make their way to Claire's abode, and upon their arrival, Claire proposes a thorough inspection of the house for any necessary repairs. They step inside, and as they take in the surroundings, Claire's discerning eye picks up on the first item on the list, which happens to be a door jam in need of replacement. They soon make their way to the garden, where Claire points out a broken fence slat, causing her to fall during an intense game of zombies. Henry teases her to avoid returning to the scene of the crime. Their jolly spirits prevail as they share memories of the past, with Claire exhibiting the front steps that Henry broke during a spirited game of tag back in their third grade days. As the night wears on, Claire expresses her gratitude to Henry for his help and the need to start early the next day. She brings up the topic of Henry's mother's party and proposes a theme. Although Henry has taken care of the invitations and catering, Claire is keen to brainstorm a theme. Struggling to come up with one, Claire suggests they leave the house and its energy and find a new spot to clear their minds and spark their creativity. Claire then leads Henry to a place that might inspire a fresh perspective. In the following scene, Tom sits alone in Henry's room, his mind absorbed in the pages of a book. Suddenly, his eyes alighted on the letter Henry had written for Claire. As he reads it, a spark ignites within him, and his thoughts race with inspiration. 
The words of the letter stir his emotions, and he feels a sudden urge to act on this newfound inspiration. Without hesitation, Tom makes his way to Lily's flower shop. When he arrives, he surprises her with his presence. With passion and sincerity in his voice, Tom tells Lily that he wants to help with the writing and offer his own unique perspective. Lily is skeptical at first, but Tom assures her that he has come up with something truly special. He reads the letter to her, recounting the first time he saw her and expressing his feelings of love and devotion. As he speaks, Lily is struck by the depth of emotion in his words, and she can feel the impact he has made on her. Speechless, Lily suddenly realizes that it is getting late and that she should be going. Tom, too, has an early start in the morning, and they bid each other good night. Walking away from the shop, Tom feels a sense of exhilaration and possibility. Claire and Henry venture to the stadium behind their high school, seeking solace and inspiration in the tranquility of their surroundings. As they approach the stairs, Henry offers his hand to Claire, his playful demeanor belying a deep desire to protect her from falling again. The two companions banter and laugh, their youthful energy permeating the quiet stillness of the empty stadium. But as they continue their playful exchange, Claire's emotions take hold, her surprise and gratitude palpable as Henry remembers a special place from her past. Together, they muse on ideas for the upcoming celebration, allowing their creativity to flow freely in this space that has remained unchanged throughout the years. Claire's passion for photography sparks an idea that ignites their imaginations, and both of them eagerly plan to use Henry's mom's photos to decorate the party. As they laugh and joke, their eyes meet, leaving only the warmth of their connection. In the subsequent scene, Henry and Claire make their way back home, and their laughter fills the air with joy and warmth. Suddenly, Claire's eyes widen as she spots someone familiar. It's Rich, and her heart leaps with excitement as she runs towards him and embraces him in a tight hug. Rich surprises her with a dinner invitation, and Claire is elated, so she turns to introduce her boyfriend to Henry. The shock has taken over Henry's expression, but he composes himself quickly, offering a polite greeting to Rich. It's clear that he's surprised by the sudden appearance of Claire's boyfriend, but he hides it well. Claire presents Henry as her neighbor and childhood friend, and Rich nods with a smile. However, Henry's mind is elsewhere, as he knows that this changes everything. Nevertheless, he manages to maintain his composure and suggests meeting tomorrow for the celebration plan and the house's repair. With that, Henry walks away, his heart pounding with emotions that he cannot quite explain. He knows that he needs to face his feelings, but for now, he must push them aside and focus on the task at hand. Claire and Rich make their way into the house. Their embrace lingers a moment longer, the sweet surprise of seeing each other again palpable in the air. Rich's eyes survey the space, his thoughts lingering on the possibility of finally being able to share a home with Claire. The mention of selling the house, however, brings a furrow to Claire's brow. The sentimental value of the old family home is not lost on her, and she feels torn between wanting to move on and holding on to the memories it holds. Rich senses her hesitation and quickly apologizes for pushing the matter and bringing up the search for realtors, hoping to put her at ease. Dinner soon becomes the topic of conversation, and both Claire and Rich's stomachs grumble with anticipation at the prospect of a satisfying meal in each other's company. Next, Henry steps into his room, his heart heavy with a newfound truth that is about to shake his world. Tom is already there, and as he nervously tells him that Claire has a boyfriend, confusion and anger mix within him like a storm, threatening to consume him. He confesses that just seeing her again has brought back all the old feelings, a flood of emotions that he thought he had left behind. The memories of what they had shared come rushing back, and he's frustrated with himself, believing that he was foolish to think he ever had a chance with her. Tom tries to console him, apologizing for how he feels. But Henry can't help but feel hurt that Claire never mentioned her boyfriend to him, despite how well they have been getting along. He can't help but wonder if he ever had a chance with her, or if it was all just in his head. However, Tom is quick to remind him that they've only hung out a few times and that his feelings for Claire are just a decade-old crush. Henry sighs and agrees, and Tom encourages him to give it time, to let go of his feelings, or perhaps find fault in Claire. The weight of his emotions is overwhelming, and he quickly leaves. The next morning, as the sun cast a warm glow over the town, Claire ambles along the streets towards Lily's charming little shop, clutching a steaming cup of coffee. She hands it over to Lily, who accepts it with graciousness and thanks. Overjoyed to be in her company, Lily mentions that she has something important to share with her. Lily's tone is bursting with delight as she recounts Tom's impromptu visit to the shop the night before. Claire is taken aback by the news that Tom has offered to assist Lily with writing her romance cards. Lily lauds Tom's talent for eloquently expressing romantic and sentimental emotions, and Claire is left in awe. Lily's words stir something in Claire, and she expresses her wish for someone to surprise her in a similar way. She confesses that Rich has never written her a love letter or poem, and she admires people who can express their emotions with honesty, 
and vulnerability. After a shared laugh, Claire eagerly asks Lily to reveal the contents of Tom's note, eager to learn about the surprise that has brought her friend such joy. Later that day, Henry arrives at Claire's house, determined to begin the repairs. He playfully ribs her about her height as he enters, but his lightheartedness fades when he sees the stress etched on her face. When he asks what's wrong, Claire scoffs and tries to brush it off, but Henry knows her too well. He senses her apprehension and presses her to open up. She confesses that she's not sure if selling the house is the right choice for her, despite previously thinking she was ready to move on with Rich. Henry reassures her that she doesn't have to sell and advises her to talk to her partner, Rich. He's certain that Rich will understand, but she needs to tell him how she feels now before it's too late. As they walk into the garden, Claire thanks him for being such a great friend. They share a meaningful look, and just when it seems like the moment couldn't get any more intimate, Claire drops a bombshell. She tells Henry that Tom has been crushing on her best friend, Lily. Henry is surprised but dismisses it as Tom being Tom. Claire insists that it's more serious than that and tells him how Tom had wooed her friend with romantic prose, professing his love for her. Henry is taken aback, interrupting Claire mid-sentence before dashing off in a frenzy to find Tom. Henry storms into the room with the ferocity of a tornado, his eyes ablaze with fiery anger. His mother tells him that Tom is upstairs, and without a word, Henry rushes up the stairs. His fury boils over as he bursts into the room. The air in the room is thick with tension as Henry advances on Tom, and questions him about reading his letter for Lily, looking for an explanation. Tom tries to defend himself, stuttering out that he wanted to impress Lily and get her attention. But Henry's anger only grows, his eyes flashing with a mix of hurt and disbelief. He accuses Tom of lying to Lily, using his heartfelt words as a tool for his own gain. But Tom cuts him off, insisting that by hiding the truth from Claire, Henry is no different than a liar. As they continue to argue, the room becomes a scene of chaos. Books and papers are thrown aside as they search for the letter, their movements frantic in their desperation. Henry's heart beats wildly in his chest as he realizes the letter is nowhere to be found. Henry and Tom dash down the stairs, their minds consumed with the search for the lost letter. They interrogate Henry's mother, but she's just as clueless as they are. The pair rummage through the living room, turning over every table and chair, hoping to find some trace of the elusive note. In a sudden moment of clarity, Henry glimpses Claire approaching the house through the window. Knowing that he needs to distract her, he instructs Tom to continue the search and bolts to the front door to greet her. Henry's nerves are frayed as Claire asks him why he disappeared earlier, and whether everything is alright. Momentarily taken aback, he tries to muster up some small talk. Claire, sensing his anxiety, reassures him that he doesn't need to be so worried about his mother's birthday party. Despite her eagerness to come inside, Henry holds Claire's hand tightly and leads her on a trip to the birthday gift store to purchase all the necessary party supplies. When Claire inquires about Susan's gift, Henry tells her that the party itself is the gift. Claire is taken aback by his lack of understanding of women's preferences and interests. After some discussion, they decide to digitize Susan's photos and create a slideshow for the party. Claire offers to take pictures of Henry to add to the collection, and he agrees, albeit with a tinge of anxiety still present. Meanwhile, Henry is anxiously texting Tom, desperate to know if he's found the letter. Unfortunately, the answer is no, and Henry is left feeling perplexed and confused by the situation. Tom's desperation grows by the minute as he rummages through every nook and cranny in search of the elusive letter. Even Lily's flower shop is not spared from his frantic search, as he turns the pots and flowers upside down in a desperate attempt to find the missing piece. As Lily steps out to greet him, she notices the turmoil within him and immediately inquires about what he is doing. Tom, flustered and uncharacteristically tongue-tied, blurts out that he came to see her. Lily, amused by his confession, reminds him of the romantic note he left last time. But Tom is insistent that he can do better. Lily, intrigued by Tom's words, encourages him to share his thoughts with her. However, the moment he tries to express himself, his words come out garbled and disjointed. Something has changed, and Lily can sense it. But before she can say anything further, Tom cuts the conversation short and rushes out, still consumed by the search for the letter. As the night draws on, Henry and Claire return home with light hearts and happy chatter. However, Henry's joy is short-lived as they encounter Rich waiting for Claire. Claire tells him about their shopping trip for Henry's mother's birthday, before handing Henry the bags and planning to meet him the next day. Once inside the house, the air grows tense as Claire and Rich discuss the pressing matter of selling the house. Rich, ever the pragmatist, reveals that he has found a realtor to view the property. Claire's response is visceral, her stress palpable as she expresses her deep emotional attachment to the house, a place of memories and cherished moments. But Rich is relentless in his pursuit to help, citing the importance of their relationship and how the distance between them threatens to erode it. He urges Claire to think of her career aspirations and to move away from the suburbs, toward the bustling energy of the arts district. Despite her initial resistance, Claire is swayed by Rich's words and the weight of her own ambitions. She agrees to consider his advice and as he takes her into his arms, she realizes that her life is about to change in profound ways. 
The sun rises on a new day, and Henry busies himself with preparations for his mother's upcoming birthday. He searches for a specific address in his mother's block notes, his mind occupied with thoughts of how to make the occasion special. Meanwhile, Claire welcomes the realtor, who has come to discuss the sale of the house. Claire, admiring the beauty of the home she has grown to love, expresses her uncertainty about the prospect of selling. The realtor responds reassuringly, stating that it is her job to ensure that the house finds a new family who will cherish it just as much as Claire has. Claire feels grateful for the realtor's kind words and agrees to continue the tour of the house. In the next scene, Henry visits Edith's house, his mother's former confidante. He finds her in the garden, playing with her grandchildren. When Henry introduced himself, her gentle features etched with a warm smile. Henry stammers out his invitation, hoping beyond hope that she will attend his mother's upcoming birthday party. Edith listens patiently, her face betraying no emotion. Finally, she speaks up, her voice soft yet firm. She tells him that if his mother truly wants her to be there, she would have to call and invite her personally. Henry nods, and promises her that he will. Later, Henry is in the midst of painting the wall in the garden when Rich appears on the scene. As Henry sets down his brush and greets Rich, the latter thanks him for his assistance. However, Rich's sudden shift in demeanor betrays the gravity of the topic he wants to discuss. Rich informs Henry that he discovered a letter he wrote to Claire ten years ago, in which he professed his love for her. Henry's face flushes with stress, as he realizes that the contents of the letter have now come to light. He tries to play it off as a silly high school crush that no longer holds any significance. As Rich prepares to depart, Henry asks him not to tell Claire and implores him to return the letter to him. Rich promises to do so, but admits that he does not have it in his possession at the moment. Immediately, Henry strides into his room, where he finds Tom still scouring the space for the elusive letter. A silly grin creeps onto Henry's face as he shares the exciting news. Rich, Claire's boyfriend, has found the letter. Tom regards him with a furrowed brow, confusion written across his features. Their frustration and stress are palpable as they leave the room, and to ease their pain, they venture to the local bar for a drink. Tom offers comfort, assuring Henry that he will forget about Claire once he returns to Leigh. But Henry knows that he cannot indulge in his feelings for her for too long, lest he risk complicating things further. In a fateful twist, Claire appears, greeting them warmly and inviting them to join her and Lily for a drink. Tom sees an opportunity to draw closer to Lily and urges Henry to join them. After much cajoling, Henry relents. As they settle around the table, the group's laughter fills the air, but Henry's merriment is short-lived. Rich joins them, and Henry appears visibly stressed in his presence. Rich wastes no time in pushing Henry's buttons, but Henry knows when it's time to leave. He excuses himself, citing exhaustion and a long day ahead. The following morning, the sun shines, casting a warm glow on Claire as she helps Lai prepare bouquets at her shop. Claire breaks the silence by asking about her relationship with Tom. Lily takes a moment to gather her thoughts before responding. She tells her that Tom is a good guy who has a romantic side, but he can be unpredictable at times. Claire encourages her to give him a chance, hoping that he will prove to be a supportive partner. Lily looks to Claire for guidance, and she replies with words of wisdom. She believes that a lasting relationship is built on a foundation of friendship and shared interests. Claire emphasizes the importance of humor, but also the need for someone who can be serious and listen actively when needed. As she speaks, Claire's eyes sparkle with passion and conviction. Lily wonders if Claire has found that kind of connection with Rich. Claire hesitates for a moment before deflecting the question, insisting that she is only speaking in general terms. She then walks away, leaving Lily to ponder her words and consider the state of her own relationship. Next, we see Susan hesitating, her heart heavy, before finally summoning the courage to make the call to Edith. With a sense of hope, she invites her old friend to her upcoming birthday party, yearning to reignite their lost connection. Yet, her optimism quickly dissipates as Edith's response only serves as a bitter reminder of their painful past and their broken relationship. Disheartened by the phone call, Susan hangs up feeling crestfallen and disenchanted. Meanwhile, in the garden, Henry and Claire are lost in their own world, capturing the beauty of the moment through their photographs. Their laughter fills the air, exuding a sense of pure joy and delight. As their bond grows stronger with every passing moment, their connection becomes more and more palpable, until an unexpected arrival shatters their bubble of happiness. Rich enters the scene, causing them to hastily withdraw from each other. Despite their genuine explanation that they were taking photos for the upcoming party, Henry leaves abruptly, unable to confront his own complicated feelings. Later, when the doorbell rings, Claire is relieved to see Lily, and the two women depart to tend to the floral arrangements, leaving Rich behind, fuming with frustration and resentment. Meanwhile, Lily feels that there is something wrong with Claire and insists that she tell her about what is going on in her mind. Claire pours out her heart, feeling overwhelmed by her emotions. She confides in Lily about her dissatisfaction with Rich's lack of empathy towards her feelings, and how it is Henry who truly listens to and understands her. Initially, Claire tries to deny any romantic feelings towards Henry, but eventually admits that he's a great guy, and she enjoys spending time with him. 
Lily nods empathetically, acknowledging Claire's struggle. She assures Claire that she's aware of her feelings towards Henry and advises her not to ignore them. Lily encourages her to act on her emotions, suggesting that Henry probably feels the same way. The two friends embrace, sharing a moment of understanding and support. When Henry was going to leave the house, he gets confronted by Rich, who approaches him with an air of aggression. The tension between them is palpable as Rich demands answers about Henry's interaction with Claire in the garden. Despite Henry's dismissals, Rich persists, his frustration evident. Meanwhile, Claire overhears the exchange, her disappointment and exasperation clear. Seeking to shift the focus of the conversation, Henry inquires about the missing letter, and Rich promises to return it promptly. Elsewhere in town, Tom pays a visit to Lily's flower shop, where he confesses that the romantic note he had given her was not written by him. He reassures her of his sincere feelings and devotion, and Lily responds with a glimmer of hope and a faint smile. She admits to sensing something different in his words and acknowledges that he is worth it. As they prepare to part ways, Lily surprises Tom by suddenly embracing him in a warm and comforting hug. Next, the realtor makes her way out of the garden gate accompanied by Rich, and Claire feels a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. She could barely bring herself to listen as the realtor told her that they had received an offer, her heart heavy with the weight of uncertainty. As Rich steps closer, offering words of support, Claire can't help but feel a pang of disappointment. His attempts to console her feel empty and unhelpful, failing to assuage her anxiety or ease her troubled thoughts. In a moment of clarity, Claire tells Rich that she needs time to think. He nods understandingly, but Claire knows that her decision isn't going to be an easy one. In the following scene, Tom bursts into Henry's room, his face lit up with excitement. He delivers the news with fervor, his voice alive with a sense of urgency. Lily likes Henry, and Tom had mustered the courage to confess his feelings for her. He urges Henry to do the same with Claire before it's too late. But Henry's heart feels heavy, and he can't shake the nagging feeling that Claire is already lost to him, with Rich by her side. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the sound of the doorbell. Henry's mood plummets as Claire and Rich enter the room, with the latter's braggadocious tone about the offer for the house ringing in Henry's ears. Despite Rich's invitation to join them in celebration, Henry's face grows darker and Claire appears crestfallen, unsure of what to do next. After politely refusing to attend the gathering, Henry retreats to his room, feeling a deep sense of turmoil within him. As the night wears on, Claire, Rich, Lily, and Tom gather at the bar to share a toast and celebrate moving forward. Claire's mind is consumed by thoughts of Henry. She wonders why he didn't join them. On the other hand, Tom and Lily are caught up in their own happiness. Meanwhile, Henry is struggling to come to terms with his feelings for Claire. Susan watches her son from across the table, and can feel his unease. She encourages him to join his friends and not give up on the possibility of love. But Henry knows that he needs to move on and that what happened in the past has to remain in the past. He then leaves the table, feeling a sense of loss. As Henry tends to the garden decorations with a sense of purpose, Claire approaches him with a palpable sense of apprehension. She asks why he failed to show up at the celebration the night before, and Henry offers a dismissive reply, telling her he was preoccupied. Claire's disappointment is writ large across her features, as she had hoped for Henry's support during such a crucial time. She reminds him of their friendship and how she had believed they could rely on each other in difficult moments. Henry counters with the argument that one night should not have the power to alter their relationship irreparably, not when they had managed to drift apart for years. Claire cannot help but feel sorrowful and vulnerable, as she confides in Henry about how selling the house has brought about significant changes in her life, and how she has yearned for his presence to make it all feel a bit more bearable. But Henry remains steadfast, unflinching in his belief that clinging onto the past can be detrimental to one's mental health, and that it's essential to forge ahead, even if the prospect is intimidating. He tries to imbue her with a sense of strength and optimism, even though his words come across as harsh and abrasive. With that, Henry excuses himself from the conversation, resuming his preparations for the party. As the night grows darker, the celebratory atmosphere at the party intensifies. Joyful voices echo through the garden. Amidst the merriment, Susan embraces Henry tightly, thanking him for bringing happiness to her special day. But just as their warmth reaches its peak, a sudden sight captures Susan's attention. Edith, the woman she had previously assumed Henry had contacted, appears on unexpectedly. Henry denies any involvement and urges Susan to approach Edith herself. With a mix of confusion and curiosity, Susan tentatively approaches Edith. What follows is a conversation that Susan never expected. Edith confesses to being sad about what happened between them, but reassures Susan that she has moved on, and that everything should remain in the past. The two women laugh, relieved to have cleared the air. As the night progresses, others join the celebration, chatting and enjoying the memories that are shared. Claire joins the table, but soon Tom and Lily leave, leaving Claire and Henry alone. Henry apologizes for missing the previous gathering, but Claire assures him that it is okay, and she decides to take the offer of the house. She congratulates Susan on her birthday, where she finds her laughing and having fun with Edith. 
Henry eventually gathers everyone to give his mother her birthday gift. With a heart full of gratitude, he acknowledges that he wouldn't be the person he is today without his mother's love and support. He extends his appreciation to Claire for helping bring the celebration to life by suggesting the theme of memories. As a film begins to play, showing snapshots from Susan's past, Henry and Claire share looks of happiness and sadness. But as the party winds down, Claire takes Rich aside and confesses her true feelings about the house. With tears in her eyes, she admits that she doesn't want to sell it, that she wants to start a family and raise her children there. Rich's initial response is one of anger and suspicion, wondering if Henry is behind the sudden change of heart. But Claire insists that she has made her decision on her own, realizing that living downtown isn't what she truly wants. In the end, Rich and Claire agree that they want different things and decide to part ways amicably. In the following scene, we witness Henry, a broken man, seated in despair, lost in his thoughts about his love for Claire. As he contemplates his situation, his mother appears and urges him to speak to Claire. With tears in his eyes, Henry turns to his mother, astonished that she knows how he feels. Yet he finds solace in her comforting words, and they embrace tightly. As Henry steps out of the door, he is met with Rich, seething with anger and blaming him for Claire's sudden breakup with him. Henry tries to defend himself, but the argument quickly escalates, and Tom intervenes to prevent things from getting out of hand. Amidst the chaos, Lily inquires about Claire's whereabouts, and Rich informs her that she has gone to clear her head. Without a second thought, Henry rushes to the dumpster, retrieves the letter he threw away, and runs with all his might to the stadium, where he finds Claire sitting alone. She is surprised to see him, but as he hands her the letter, his eyes light up with hope. Henry urges Claire to look at it, and as she holds it in her trembling hands, he recites it from memory, every word spoken with deep sincerity and passion. Henry confesses that he fell in love with Claire the day she moved in next door and has been in love with her ever since. His feelings have never faded, and he believes they never will. As they share this tender moment, tears stream down their faces, and their emotions run high. Suddenly, Claire jumps up and kisses Henry with a passion that he has never felt before. They both laugh as she asks him why it took him so long to tell her the truth. They embrace each other tightly and share another tender kiss, with their giggles filling the air. The last scene casts a warm, fuzzy blanket of love over the audience. We see Lily and Claire basking in the living room. Lily, intrigued by Henry's feelings for Claire, asks about it. Claire affirms that his love for her took root in their high school days. She proceeds to offer the letter to Lily. As Lily pours over its contents, the words stir something within her, triggering a moment of realization, the very same words Tom shared with her before. Summoning Tom, Lily chases him around the living room, relishing the giddy playfulness of their love. Meanwhile, Henry and Claire remain tangled in each other's arms, lost in laughter and kisses, with the sweet scent of love wafting around them. 